Hey gentlemen, welcome to the ninth lecture on special relativity. Today we're going to be talking about a very important concept, which is the surface integral, okay? Now, the surface integral is one of the most difficult computations in multivariable calculus, but it's also one of the most important, okay? And our doing now is designed to accustom you to the applications of the surface integral. So, for our do now, I want you to do something very simple, which is identify the equation for density. For density, okay? So just go ahead and write down what do you think the equation for density is. Uh, hint, it involves a fraction, a rational, a rational fraction. So go ahead, write down the equation for density. And uh, although this might seem off topic, we'll see the connection to surface intervals in just a moment. So good luck, and we'll see you in a few seconds. Okay, folks, so hopefully that was enough time to go ahead and solve the do now. Now we're actually going to go ahead and do it, right? So what is the equation for density? Well, it's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be the mass of whatever object, surface we're considering, divided by the volume of said object. Okay? So let's go ahead and write down the units for density now that we're in the ball game, right? What are the units for density? Mass is going to be kilograms. And of course, volume is going to be cubic meters. So density, I can express as a unit of kilograms per cubic meters, right? Kilograms per cubic meters. In fact, that's so important that it's worth writing down neatly. Kilograms per meter cube or cubic meter. Okay, now why am I talking about density setup? Well, what's the point of using surface intervals for density? Well, as it turns out, surface intervals can actually help us find the mass of any variable surface. And here's where we transition into the lesson. Okay? So right now we're in the lesson phase. And during the lesson, we're actually going to find out how we can use the idea of the surface interval to compute the mass of any object. Of any object. So it might be a variable surface like this eraser, right? Hopefully you see this eraser. It might look rectangular, but it has a lot of bridges in it, right? How do you calculate the mass of something like this? If you only know the density and volume, and those are also variables, okay? Well, the surface interval is gonna help us answer that question. So let's go ahead and solve for mass over here. So the surface interval, although the mass of any given region or object is gonna be the product of its density, is going to be the product of its density times what? Times its volume, right? Times its volume. And that makes sense, right? Because mass is measured in kilograms, and density, as you can see, is measured in kilograms per cubic meters, and volume is cubic meters. Naturally, we will get mass as a, as a product. Okay? Third time, I'm picking this up. Now, how can we apply surface integrals to this question? Well, to understand the utility of surface intervals, I need to transition from some um, some kind of a, you know, uh, some kind of a, how can I describe this? Um, you know, regularly, regular shaped uh, object to this crazy thing, right? As you can see, it's a variable surface. There's no, there's no limit to this thing. It's curved at, around the edges. It has these weird bridges. How do we find the mass of an object like that? if we know its density and its volume as a function, right? How do we do that? Well, the surface interval is gonna tell us. So let me begin with a kind of a visual aid, okay? So let's erase all of this, okay? So now let's say I have some kind of an object, uh, some kind of surface that I'm considering, something like, something like, uh, why don't I go back to my horseshoe Something like that, right? It doesn't have to be three-dimensional, but I think you'll understand the utility of it better if it is three-dimensional. So I'll just say we're working in R3, okay? So don't get too uh, crazy over that. That's not gonna pose any difficulties, I hope. Okay, so here I have some kind of a 3D surface, right? And I wanna find a mass, that's my goal. What's my goal? 
my goal is to find the mass of this surface. Let's call this surface, let's denote it with an x. Okay? So my goal is to find the mass of this of this surface. So that is so important that it's worth writing down. Um, do we have another color maybe? Yes, we do. So here is my goal. Find the mass. Find the mass of surface S. Okay, so how do I find the mass of a kind of variable surface like this, right? Um, its volume clearly stays constant, but its density might be a function of position. Right, as my x changes and my y changes, so will the density across the surface of this of this of this region, right? It's not uniformly it doesn't have a uniform density. For example, this book, this book might have a uniform density, right? At every position in the book, it's gonna have the same density rho. On the other hand, if I have if I have uh, I'm using the same examples over and over. But if I have uh, something like this, maybe you recognize this, I stole this off a construction site. If you recognize this, then you'll understand that this kind of a variable surface has a variable density across its region, right? So those are just two examples of objects that have uniform density versus variable density. Oh, and I do believe our student is done taking his exam. Oh, Mr. Rodriguez, he's done taking his exam. Yeah. So, um, now that you have some real life applications of uniform, sorry, non uniform density versus yes. uniform density. Okay, okay. Now, what we're going to do is actually find the mass of this region uh, by chopping it up into a tiny little piece. Uh, I'm sure you guessed that by now. Simply by the nature of this class, you probably guessed that we're going to chop this, chop up this region into infinitely many, infinitesimally many small pieces, right? Okay, hopefully you see what I just drew. I just chopped up my, my, uh, my diagram into many small tiny pieces. Now let's take one of these small tiny pieces and let's consider its properties, okay? Let's take a look at this small tiny piece. Can I call it DA? I just want to call it DA because I feel more comfortable when I'm talking in terms of differentials. So that's my DA, my very small surface right there. Now of course this surface is going to have some density associated with it, right? Because remember that uh, for this uh, non-uniform density, for this non-uniform density surface, my density is going to vary according to my position. Right? So for example, as as, uh, as my x and y, so here you can see as my x and my y change, so will my density. My density will not remain constant, okay? So let's take a look at this very small piece dA. What's the density going to be here? Well, I can specify this using a certain point, but let's keep things general. The density of this small region, hmm. What type of density should we use? Should we use area density, volume density, uh, line density? I think it's best if we use area density, right? So what are the three types of densities? We have lambda, lambda for one dimensional density. We have rho for three dimensional density. And uh, I forgot what the symbol for the two dimensional density is. So I'll just invent some Greek letter. Who wants to give me a Greek letter? Uh, Sh what? Shout out your favorite Greek letter that's not on the board. Whoa! Oh, I already have rope. Give me another one. Uh, lowercase delta? Uh, okay, I don't know how that looks like. Let's do, oh, sigma. Let's do lowercase sigma. sigma. Let's do lowercase sigma, yes. But what is that? That's actually, that represents a two dimensional density. No, what does that look like? Oh. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? It looks like that's, half infinity. Yeah, that's lowercase sigma. Unfortunately, I think my viewers may be having a case of lowercase v right here, so let's fix that camera right there. And boom, we're, we're set to go, folks. We're set to go. Uh, anyway, so here we have... Instruct the Lee Path Gallery and now invented a new phrase, lowercase v. Yes, yes. That's a great question. Now let's go, let's get back on track. So, 
the density of this infinitesimally small region that we like to denote as dA is going to be what? It's going to be rho, sorry, lowercase sigma of that infinitesimally small region. As simple as that. No need to complicate things. The density of that very small region we will simply denote as lowercase sigma sub i. I, of course, denotes what, what my position is, what, uh, what i region I'm considering, okay? That's my density. What about my volume? Well, of course, this is a two-dimensional region. Even though we're working in R3, this does happen to be a 2D region. So we're not talking about volume anymore. We're talking about what? Area, right? That's the whole point of choosing lowercase sigma so that we work with area. So I'm just oh, going to go ahead and write d a sub i, right? So what I'm doing right here is very simple. Don't let the notation confuse you, folks. This might look Greek to you, but try to understand what it's communicating. I'm multiplying density by, by area. What's density times area? Can the audience tell me what's density times area? Be careful. Density. Tell me, what's density times volume? Um, density times volume is equal to um, mass. Yes. So density times area will be the same thing. This is going to give me the mass of an infinitesimally small piece of my region. I would region. say that the, uh, unless the density is huge, then the mass will be infinitesimally small too. Right. Uh, that's exactly right. But now we're going to take the sigma. We're going to sum up all the masses over this entire region. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the summation. We're going to take the summation, the summation from i equals 1 to n pieces of sigma sub i d a i. So what am I doing here? Let, don't let the notation confuse you. What did I just do here? Well, try to understand what I did in the last step. I took my density, multiplied it by my area, and I got the mass of a very, very small piece. Then I used summation notation to sum up the masses over my entire region, right? And that's why I put summation of sigma, sorry, lowercase sigma, sub i, dA sub i, from i equals 1 to n, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, audience, 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 how can I make this approximation exact? Um, wow, this... I swear this guy is searching up answers or a um, genius. Um, no, I just know the integral, 2D integral, can give you the information of a uh, 2D area in a graph very easily. Very, very smart. Oh, watch out. Oh, That's the camera right there. Now, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's Sorry, go ahead. instructor. No problem. Let's go ahead and take the limit, the limit of my summation, as the number of pieces I'm considering approaches infinity. Okay, so what I'm going to have... Do when you consider infinitesimally small bit space. Right, so, so I'm going to have the limit uh, as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n, be careful, don't knock over the tripod, of sigma sub i d a i. Now, 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 audience, I'd like you to tell me what the limit of a summation is. What is the limit of a summation, sir? Oh, the limit of you actually said it uh, 10 seconds ago, 3 seconds ago. What is the limit of a summation? You said it 10 seconds ago and it begins with an I. Come on. Um, integral. Integral, that's right. That's exactly right. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't understand it. The limit of a, oh yeah. That's right. So let me actually go ahead and write that down in vibrant orange, right? Vibrant orange. So. That means the total mass of my surface, the total mass of my surface is going to be the surface integral over my surface of sigma sub i dA. Oh, we no longer need the i's because we have the sigma already. So we're just going to have the mass is equal to the density represented by lowercase sigma multiplied by the area represented by dA. Okay? That right there is the equation for mass using a surface integral. Right? And of course this works in 
you're working with a variable density, if you're working with a variable surface, if you're working with any type of function that's changing constantly, this is the way to go, surface intervals. All right, folks, thank you for watching lecture number nine. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.